Good morning, friends. Welcome back to Astrology Today and Tarot. My name is Mel Rose. This is the Tarot portion and the second half of my daily astrology vlog, which you can check out on my other channel, Astrology Today with Mel Rose. Here I will discuss the Tarot card that sits on the side of the page, then I'll do a quick review of the day's aspects before I play another card that may give us something more to think about. So let's get into it. The card that currently sits on the side of the page is the Nine of Pentacles, and it is there because it belongs with the second 10 days of the sun's transit in the land of Virgo. Virgo is an earth sign, and pentacles or coins in Tarot are also earth, uh, are also about earth element. And earth element symbolism has to do with the physical resources that we have, our bodies, our health, and then also our money and the nice things we like to have, our wealth and our finances. So uh, what it really has to do with is not just the material resources we have, but the work we are willing to do to turn those resources into something um, that has value for us over the long term. So here we have the Nine of Pentacles and we see somebody who has done the work. Okay, so if we put this in context, back with back there with the Eight of Pentacles, we saw that, um, you know, we saw that there's no reward without effort, right? You really have to put yourself into the work. You have to, you know, perf sort of perfect your, um, to, to, you have to, <laughs> you have to sort of perfect your process, perfect your art or your skills so that it has a good deal of value for you. And, and in doing that, what you do eventually is you create for yourself a situation where you have, um, you know, you've made things that had value, you've been able to sell them or trade them, uh, you've been able to build up, um, uh, build up a certain amount of value for yourself and now you're able to sort of just appreciate and enjoy the fruits of your labor here. So um, this is this is success. This is the success we were looking for. This is a person who is comfortably dressed uh, behind a garden wall, you know, sort of enjoying their privacy and their talk with their friend, a bird. And, um, you know, they have all this ripe fruit that suggests that they have, uh, you know, stuff of value that they can enjoy you know, in basic peace and relative quiet. You know, they have this to share, they have it to give, and they have it to enjoy for themselves. So, you know, there's a there's a level of opulence, of luxury that comes in with this card that just says, I have enough. In fact, I have more than enough, and I'm pretty comfortable enjoying it. So, that's the Nine of Pentacles, and may we, may we, may we all have moments like that in our lives, for sure. With that said, I'm going to go ahead and uh, shuffle some cards while I remind myself and the cards that the sun is in Virgo and the first quarter moon is in Sagittarius. So the first quarter moon, uh, you know, is a time when we pause, we're shifting gears, we look back on the goals we set, the, we make sure our plans are solid and in good order so that now we can begin to take action um, on on the on the culmination of those goals and Sagittarius is a good place for the moon to be for that because Sagittarius is very up and out vib vibration we're seeking adventure and we're seeking uh, sort of um, universal truths that are that are that are applicable everywhere we go so that we can relate to people and so you know this is a good this is a good time to be getting started taking action Sagittarius is a fire sign. Fire signs are very active, they're very impulsive, they're very interested in momentum and forward motion. So it's a good time to be getting started taking care of or bringing to culmination those goals that we set for ourselves. And in Virgo, when the sun is in Virgo, we realize that time is of the essence and we want to work diligently to get the things done. We don't want to leave anything undone. We've got a full moon coming up in a week, so we'd like to have some of this stuff taken care of by the full moon so that then we have something to celebrate as we look back on what we have achieved for the month. On the moon side of the page today, early to morning, this morning at 5, 10, Moon goes trine to Jupiter, and Moon and Jupiter get along really well, and that trine functioning is like ideal, it's very harmonious, it's almost sort of blessed by angels, okay? So we can really feel the blessings of growth and security that we have that we have gained, and it's a time when, because we're feeling 
um, because we're feeling that growth we've undergone and we've, we're feeling very um, sort of well supplied and secure in our lives, then, uh, you know, it's a good time to share, share your time with people you love and share your resources with people you love and just share your, you know, your experience about your expansion with people that you like to keep close to you. And then less than a half an hour later, moon goes sext out to Mercury. So, uh, you know, while we're sharing this time with people, we want to keep the conversation light. Okay. We want to maybe get to know somebody a little bit better. It's a very cooperative vibe, but it's not a serious talk vibe. It's more like let's have conversations that move us forward and, and keep us feeling motivated. And then later on this morning at 723, moon goes in opposition to Mars. Now we may not be very good company at this time. This can be like we we don't we're not feeling really as though we want to act on the things that are on our plate to act on the thing i would relate that to is like oh i have to make all the phone calls about the bills today right <laughs> so you know uh it, it, it makes us a little grumpy we feel a little bit resistant we may not be um very friendly we might be somewhat impulsive and impetuous or our feelings are very much at odds with what the thing, what with the things that we have to do. So, uh, you know, keep that in mind, especially if you um, have to be around people that you like, love, or depend on in some way, rely on in some way. Uh, that we want to really mind the way we're treating the people that help us. And then the sun, the sun goes square to the moon this afternoon at one o eight, and this is a time when we will be spurred into action. That's what that square is about. Uh, it, the sun square the moon indicates that half lit qu uh, first quarter moon um, shape that the, the the shape the sun's it's like the sun's relationship to the moon here is what makes that shape and uh, that square also just says you know we might a challenge might arise especially in our relating with ourselves or um, you know in our relating with the people that we keep around us. Uh, this is a time when we're getting out of the planning mode and into the action mode. And that's what the square vibration, it, it, it raises a challenge so you can remember what you dedicated yourself to do and then you can go ahead and do it. In the ongoing column, we have a new shape to consider. It's called the mystic rectangle, friends. So here we have Moon and Mars in opposition and Mercury and Jupiter in opposition. And with those crisscrossing like that, the moon is sextile to Mercury and trying to Jupiter. Mars is sextile to Jupiter and trying and trying to Mercury. So they're all interrelated. And we've got like these oppositions that say, you know, Mercury in opposition to Jupiter has been saying, um, you know, that we're easily distracted and we're actually kind of looking for distractions at this time. It's almost like Jupiter's got all this personal growth on offer to us and Mercury, our brain is just like, yeah, anything but that. I want to do anything but that. Let me find something else to do, right? And then Moon in opposition to Mars, like I said, we, we're not really feeling like we want to act on the things that we that we have on our plate to act on. It might make us a little grumpy, right? But these sextiles and trines that sort of wrap up these opposition, oppositions, you've got sextiles and trines all the way around, they kind of give us you know, a map to get around those obstacles that we're putting in our own way at this time. Okay. So, uh, keep in mind that, you know, the moon in trine position with Jupiter is a time when we feel really blessed and we notice our growth and our personal expansion and, and we're able to share with people that we like and love very easily at that time. And the moon in sextile with Mercury is saying, you know, as long as we keep the light, the conversation light, if we keep things positive with the people we keep around us, maybe try to get to know someone a little bit better, that that's going to work out well for us. In the meantime, Mars is sextile to Jupiter. So that's really good fortune um, in terms of like uh, things that we can take action on, right? Uh, even though we may not be feeling so much about like taking those actions, we know that the actions that we take at this time are toward our personal growth and expansion. And then Mars is also trying to Mercury there saying, you know, whatever it is that we can think on, you know, think up to act on those, uh, those actions, those thoughts and actions paired together are really in a blessed space for us as though we're being looked out for by angels. So, uh, you know, keep in mind that we have all this really positive stuff going on when you feel that grumpiness or when you feel a little bit 
confused or this uh, this urge to sort of distract yourself, um, you know, understand that uh, that the the actions we have on our plate to take are actually um, really good for us in terms of our ability to expand and grow and and gain the things that we want to gain for ourselves. And, uh, you know, we're very rational about it, too. So um, it's, a, it's a good time to take those actions regardless of how they're making us feel at this time. And then uh, Venus is quincunx to Pluto today. Uh, Venus was quincunx to Neptune, and Neptune was sextile to Pluto. So we had this uh, sort of long triangle here called a yod, but now that's no longer the case. We don't have that sextile anymore. We don't have that quincunx anymore. It's just Venus quincunx to Pluto at this time. And so this is a time when, you know, we might be feeling a little extra needy. Um, we might become a little bit demanding, um, you know, it's almost as though we're seeking deeper connections or we're deep, seeking more uh, content, more <laughs> depth, more reality to our connections. And, uh, uh, you know, it's sort of a self-preservation challenge or a self-care challenge because uh, we can't really make demands of people, uh, you know, on people of things that we've not asked of them before. Um, we can't make demands on people of things that they're not able to give us, right? So don't make any ultimatums. If there's something you feel that you really need, uh, maybe f see if you can supply that for yourself at this time. And then we also have this shape here. This is called a T-square. It's called a T-square because these two are in opposition to each other. And then Uranus is square to both of them. So another way to draw that would be just to put that line straight at the middle and make a T. And this indicates some sort of um, some sort of exciting energy, a, a little bit of a, a little bit of a troublesome vibe. Um, it's sort of like a square where it's something that's going to uh, cause us a little problem that causes us to remember our dedication and move into action and do the thing that we said we would do. Right. So Venus over here in Leo just wants to be, uh, you know, receiving all of the appreciation that that of course we uh, deserve and also you know sort of showing off in grand style for the people that we like love and can't get enough of or showing off in grand style you know the the things that we can spend money on the shiny happy beautiful stuff opulent things that we like to have and then saturn is over here saying mm, you know uh retrograde even in aquarius saying we need to recommit ourselves to the things that we would like to say we're being responsible for, especially in terms of our community. Can we just have a little bit more commitment in terms of, um, in terms of how we show up for our community, you know, um, and, and what we lend there in terms of security, because the security that we bring to the community is security that is returned to us. Right. Um, and then Uranus is over here in Taurus, right. Been shaking up our supply chain making it not necessarily easy to get the things that we need and desire. Um, and Taurus is ruled by who? Taurus is ruled by Venus, right? <laughs> so this is really about, you know, the struggle that we have getting the stuff that we like, the, you know, the, the fact that groceries cost more and gas costs more, and sometimes the things that we're trying to get just aren't coming to us, right? Um, this is going to keep going on for a while. Uh, so, you know... The guidance I have for this T-square right now is to really err on the side of what is responsible, err on the side of bringing more security and bringing more um, stability to our civic sphere, okay, to our communities, to our groups that we are part of, the networks that we rely on for support and validation. That's important here, and it's also important up here because you know, Taurus is really just asking us to find some reliable security and Venus is not about that right now. Okay. So we're going to, we're going to weight this toward the Saturn side and say, we want to, want to err on the side of being civic, civic responsibly, responsible in the civic sphere and responsible in the social sphere as well. Okay. And I have been shuffling my cards with all of that said, I'm going to turn this one over. Friends, we have the Knight of Pentacles. Okay, so. 
First of all, we got pentacles and pentacles, all right? So it's all an earth and vibe. It's all about the physical resources we have. It's about our health, wealth, and finances. Um, and it's about what we do with our resources to help them have value for ourselves and others. And pentacles are a very Saturn vibe. Saturn is probably the most earthen <laughs> of all of the of all of the planets and uh, it rules Capricorn and Aquarius. So Venus also rules an earth sign Virgo and uh, what's the other earth sign? Taurus, Capricorn and Virgo, obviously. Virgo is ruled by Mercury and Taurus is ruled by Venus. So I, I don't know if I got that mixed up or not, but uh, Mercury, Venus and, Cap and Saturn are all rulers of earth signs. So, uh, but Saturn is the earth guy and, uh, you know, this is the per, this is the person, this is the planet that's really all about our personal stability and our ability to feel well resourced and supported. And with the Knight of Pentacles, what we see is we have somebody who, um, who has some, uh, physical resources, who's in good health, who has, perhaps, you know, sort of a, a, a nest egg, if you will, a, a seed packet, some resources that they, that they are, uh, that they have available, that they have built for themselves. Um, and then they come sort of riding in on this horse. It all, it always looks like a gift, almost like they're showing up for a wedding with a gift or something like that. Right. Uh, but you know, what they have to share comes with a lot of support and stability behind it. Notice they're on this strong horse with four legs. So, uh, you know, that's that's their support and their stability and also their forward motion. The knight can move on, move in pretty quickly. Um, it can be sort of like all of a sudden I have this resource available to me that I can use. So, um, you know, somebody might come in with an offer uh, maybe with some money or maybe with an opportunity to earn some money or in some other way earn some stability um, and security in your life. And, uh, you know, maybe that's you. Maybe you've been working on it. Maybe you got to here and uh, you said, I'm going to find a way to bundle this all up into one package and I'm going to start over with it. I'm going to invest it somewhere else. This always This always seems to speak to me of investment, though, and perhaps somebody coming in with um, something to invest in an idea that you have or or in, in something that you already have in motion. So, you know, perhaps you're over here, you're the nine of pentacles, you've already done a whole bunch of work and you've built your own resources and you're doing really good. And, and when people see you doing well, sometimes they show up and they say, hey, I want to make an investment and help you do even better. This has happened to a friend of mine recently. She sells candles locally and uh, she you know, as, as far as I knew, she was only selling them at farmer's markets and things like that. But I found out recently that she's going to be so, sold at one of the local national grocery store chains and perhaps at one of the even bigger local national uh, retail chains. So that's that's big news, right? She was working. Uh, she was putting a lot of diligent effort into it and she really got to a place with it where she was feeling comfortable, like she was really selling those candles and, and starting to make a living off of it, starting to be able to enjoy the fruits of her labor. And now these corporate entities come in and they say, hey, we think we can help you have a little more security and success. So, uh, you know, when those offers come in, uh, give them your due consideration. If you know that you've put a lot of yourself into something, a lot of your own wisdom and diligent effort and planning into something, and now it is bearing fruit for you, um, and then somebody comes along and says, I want to help you, you know, bear more fruit for yourself. Give that some, some real consideration because it might be a really good opportunity for you. I, you know, it, it occurs to me that both of these people, um, are, are, you know, working within a framework of some stability, right? The knight comes in riding on a horse and the knight is a knight. So they come from a royal family. They become, they come from a family that is well resourced and, and, uh, you know, that contributes to the stability and the speed with which the knight can move. The nine of pentacles, this person has this sort of secure wall around their garden 
And, uh, you know, that is a different kind of stability. It's work that they did to create, you know, a secure place where they can enjoy the fruits of their labor. So, you know, Saturn right now is really talking to us about um, bringing our resourcefulness, bringing our, um, not just our money, but our our physical ability to help out, our financial well-ability to help out, just whatever capability that we have to contribute in the sphere of the community, especially in the civic sphere or in the social sphere, also in the workplace sphere, out in, in our outer lives, okay, out in our cultural world, um, recommitting ourselves uh, to the endeavors that are there to add to the security of the community. So it's not just me and it's not just, you know, this one other person, but it's, you know, a whole community of people that is uplifted by the work that we're doing and the, and the contribution that we make with our efforts. Yeah. Um, so yes, when that offer comes in, give it some serious consideration. Mercury is in opposition to Jupiter right now. So we might be looking for some distractions. We might not notice the offer coming in when it does. And we will really want to have our eyes peeled for it when the Knight of Pentacles comes riding up with that, with that, uh, you know, investment to offer. We want, we want to be paying attention. So um, you know, allowing ourselves to be distracted at this time is probably not the very best thing that we can do. It is an opposition aspect, but, uh, you know, part of that is going to be, you know, keeping our conversations on the positive and light side, right? And part of it is going to be on paying attention on when to take action, all right? The night knows when to, when to take action. The night knows when to move. So, um, you know, pay attention uh, to the signals you're getting from other people in the community too about about uh, what's available and when to move on it. All right, I think that's all I have to say about it today, friends. Thank you so much for joining me. I truly appreciate your presence here. My name is Mel Rose, and I'll see you all back here tomorrow for more Astrology Today and Tarot.